Hi guys and welcome to another video on our channel and the movie that we're going to be reviewing today is a movie called Ties That Bind, directed by Leila Jansi. Marriage is not supposed to be work. This is work. This is Africa. We don't adopt children. Society demands we make them. A woman who cannot have a child, she's shunned. Cold names. I don't know how anyone could forgive a woman who didn't know how to love her child. Ties That Bind is a, about a village housewife, an American lecturer, and a doctor who returns to serve her community who are bound together by the pain of losing a child in a destined meeting in a small village in Kroboland. It stars Amake Abebrese, Omotala Jalade Ekainde, Kimberly Elise, and John Dumelo. Okay, so um, when it comes to the collaboration and the acting in this film, I think it was done very strategically, especially bringing in a Nigerian as well, Motala, who's really well known in Nigeria. Um, I think it was it was a great cast to see together because they all did such a great job. Especially, um, there were some faults, but I think Omotala. <laughs> 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 Motela being the great actress that she is and I think um, the fact that Kimberly Elise was in it as well, an American act actress, um, I think they held the movie up because obviously they're well known, they've been in the game for a while. Um, Kimberly Elise as well, yeah, to be in a Ghanaian film, that was amazing because it's like one of a kind, we have never seen this kind of collaboration before and she did especially well. So, and I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, she's not so new, but this is like one of her first sort of feature films. But she, she was alright, she was okay in the movie. We'll talk about that later on. We'll talk about her later. So, the storyline was really effective, and um, the storyline was kind of reflected in the title Ties That Bind. Um, obviously, they were bound by the loss of losing a child. Mm. and it's, it was a nice title because you know it's different from the um, uh, storylines <laughs> such as um, Fires of War. What did they give it was Kingdom in Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Illuminati Kingdom. Illuminati Kingdom. <laughs> All these other like yeah. rubbish titles. So it was going to be different. Yeah. So it was it was really good there. Lots of thought. Um, yeah, the storyline it was good. You know. It's, it's kind of like an American storyline, like people coming together, talking about their loss, like uh, for Colored Girls, mm -hmm. which Kimberly Elise was actually in. And mm -hmm. yeah, um, I like the storyline. It was something that Af the African movie industry hasn't really seen very often. We've seen a woman lose a child, but we haven't seen like people come together. The element of having an American actress as well made it different. Um, however, there was a problem with the storyline because um, they added a, a bit where Amake Abebrese's character had a fear of religion or, or church or something like that. It didn't make sense. But it didn't make sense. It didn't add to anything. We didn't know why she had that. Yeah. It kind of just, she had just like a scene of where she was scared to go into the church mm -hmm. and then it was just a bit unnecessary. Um, also, another problem was with um, Omotala's role. Omotala obviously played a woman who had lost many children. Amake played a woman who couldn't have children with the person she loved and had lost two children. But it wasn't as if that she couldn't have kids. Yeah, she could have children, yeah. she just couldn't have it with the person she loved. And it was over dramatized. Yeah. And Kimberly Elise uh, played the role of a mother who separated herself from her child but she wants her child she back. Was a drug addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was that it? Yeah, she was struggling with drug oh, addiction. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she had depression. Yeah, I don't even know why she came all the way to Ghana to release her Apparently she came to relax. To relax, but yeah. <laughs> but with Doomsa, how can you relax? <laughs> um, yes. She became a professor or something. Yeah, a lecturer, which, well, you saw her more of a therapist than a lecturer, but... To be honest, I, I really don't... 
But at least they made that clear though. At least yeah. she, she said that. I'm she not said a that. I'm an electoral. But yeah. Why, I, I, why did you go there in the first place? <laughs> but anyways, let's not question that. that. Let's just leave that as it is. But yeah, um, it seemed like because Omotola's storyline, it was so much more like emotional than the others. Like with her spoiler, she had lost seven children, and um, compared to her. You know, colleagues. She had a, the others. Their problem didn't really match up. So it seemed like Omotala's problem was much more serious. She had lung cancer as well. So it's like the rest of them, even though they were bound by the loss of a child, it wasn't that binding. If you know what I mean? It was like Omotala, but she was great in her role. Like her storyline was great, but maybe the other people could have had much more serious problems. Even yeah. though we don't wish that on anybody. Yeah. And like another issue that we had with the film was. Um, Emma Kay's accent. Mm. Like, okay, so we understand she has this whole British accent thing going on, yeah? But in the film, half the time she was had a British accent, or half the time she had a Guardian accent, half the time she was mixing it. And like, come on, if you're doing a role, like stick to one accent, stick yeah. to your character who you're supposed to be playing, it's confusing for the audience. Yeah. And that's the only problem I really had with her. Another problem with the storyline was the introduction of the little girl at the end of the movie. It was a bit unnecessary because we all realised that there was this ghost in the Crobaland clinic. But it was like... <laughs> they would have noticed that there was a little girl living. Yeah. She wasn't even a little girl. She, she, looked, she looked like... like ten. Yeah. Yeah, she, she, was like she, was, she was a big girl. She was a big girl. <laughs> yeah. So I'm kinda of surprised that nobody realised that there was this little girl living. How there. was she feeling? Like how was she still alive? I have no idea. But it's like they, they kinda of used it as a cop out. Yeah. Like and then Kimberly at least just took this girl because we could do that. We and do um that. yeah, it just seemed a bit random. Um I think it would have been good enough if they just realised that even if they said it was a goat <laughs> or a dog, like something, but to add another character that far into the end, give her her own storyline of she ran away from Sudan. To just add a character at the end, it was just a bit, it was a bit pointless. So, oh, I wish they took that out. Yeah. It was a bit lazy sort of directing. Yeah. Lazy story writing. Yeah. When it came to the cinematography of the film and um, the lighting, I think that this was done in the more sort of Western sort of, they used kind of Western sort of editing to sort of um, differentiate the movie from other sort of African movies. You know how African movies have their own look and then when you're trying to be, you know, westernised, you have that other look and this movie had it. For me, there was a lot of low, like high key lighting, um, sort of orangey type colours, yeah. looking kind of brownish to um, set the tone of where she was. She was in some rural sort of um, village, some sort of desert sort of place but like the whole lighting sort of demonstrated that it looked it looked perfect it looked um what do you call it yeah this looked like they took the, they took the edit they didn't do the editing in ghana i know they didn't do this in ghana. <laughs> i know they they took they 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 westernized the editing a bit and it worked for the movie and what she was going for and the story that she was trying to tell and she did well by that and kudos to Layla. We're going to, overall, we're going to give the movie a 7 out of 10. Because it was a good movie, but obviously we named a couple of folks that were in it as well. So, yeah. But those are, those are folks of, like, on our personal opinion. Mm. But, yeah. Thanks for watching another review on our channel and if don't be scared to like, subscribe, share a comment, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, you know, get in contact with us, you know, talk to us and let us know what you're thinking and if you agree, feel free to disagree if you want. So, thank you. Thanks for watching.